it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in today's video we are making an envelope for the writing paper that we made in the previous video. Of course it's a technique so it's the C2C double crochet square technique. So for this project the corner to corner double crochet square I am going to be using Sherbert Starcraft Special DK I am using a three and a half, even though the yarn is prescribed as a four. You know, I always use slightly smaller hook. I've got some stitch markers, scissors, my darning needle. And of course, I am going to turn this into an envelope for the page that we made in the previous video. And of course, I used Sherbert there for the writing lines. And I thought that would make a nice sort of, you know, complementary color for the envelope. For this project, you will also need some buttons and a thin darning needle, which will go through the holes of the buttons to sew on your button to the envelope. So make your slip knot, insert your hook, and we are going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then you go back to the first chain, insert and bring through your working yarn and through the loop on your hook slip stitching your little circle together then we are going to chain two one two then you're going to do three double crochets into the circle so a double crochet is yarn over insert into the circle pull up a loop yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And a third one. And then we are going to do a double crochet for the side. So we add another double crochet to that. There we go. Okay. So initially you have here your two chains, which count as your side double crochet, your three double crochets for your middle, and another double crochet for your side. Now we are going to start with turning and from now on we're going to use one chain for turning. It makes your sides much straighter. But of course that one chain is not used for anything later on. So we're going to chain one. Now to make sure in the beginning that you know what you're doing, <laughs> I suggest just as an experiment for a little while, for a few rows, you add a red stitch marker to that one chain. That is not to be used. So then later on, when we come back, you will see that that's not to be used. So you've done your chain one. Then we are going to turn our work and then into the first V of your row here. So in fact, that is the one where that chain is coming out of you are going to do three double crochets. And now as you do your first one here, did you see that I've just completed that first one? This V here is going to be your last one that you have to use when you come back. So I'm going to put a green stitch marker in there. You know, that's the one I should be using. Just so that in the beginning you know where to find your stitches and later on you won't have to put those stitch markers there you'll just recognize the locations so that was my first double crochet now on to my second one and my third one make sure i don't include that red stitch marker there <laughs> so that basically is my side done now we are going to do the middle. So you're just going to put one double crochet on each V that you see here. And of course, those will always increase because our rows will get longer and longer up until the point where we have our longest row and then we'll have to reduce, but I'll get to that later on. And now we are going to see here, we did, remember we did a chain two for our first turn or for our first side here. So in this V on the top here, this is where we are going to place three double crochets. Okay, so yarn over, 
find that V. It's sort of lying towards the other side a bit. So you need to tip your work towards you to see it. There we go. OK, so I've picked up the two strands of the V and in there I am going to do or actually I might not have done. I'm just going in between. That's fine as well. OK, because this one is a hard one to get into. So you do your three double crochets. Once again, chain one, turn. We're going to forget about this chain one, so we're not going to use it. So you could put a red stitch marker in there. And now this V here, this very last one here, let me just show you properly. So the first V, the one that that little chain is coming out of, that's the one that we are going to use to do your three double crochets in. And that's the one that we will be using when we come back. OK, so one double crochet into that first stitch. A second one and a third one. Now we are just going to be doing our normal double crochets. And as you can see below here, we just did the three. And now, of course, here we've got a lot more because we've been adding stitches every row. Now, every row will become longer and longer, of course. So I'll be adding six stitches to each row. OK, let me just show you here what to do. So here, as you can see now, I've got that stitch marker telling me this was that very first double crochet I did in the row below. This is where I'm going to have to do my increase of three double crochets. And once you know that, see again, look, when you're looking at it like this, it's easy to miss. But in fact, that little V has sort of gone to the front a little bit. So that is where you're going to have to be picking it up. So, I mean, I sort of, I, I made sure I remembered that when I'm in this position here, you think, oh, is that it? Am I going to do my three in here? Because this is the last clear V that you have on top of your work. But it's not. It's the one that's sort of lying towards the front. So if you remember that and if you do do the trick with the um, stitch markers, just for maybe one or two rows or even more if you need to, then you will start to recognize the location where you have to do that increase quite easily. Right. Chain one, turn and into that very first V, three double crochets. And once again, here we are. That's the little V that I'm going to be using later on. Put your stitch marker in there if you're not sure. But I know that now I am starting to recognize it already. Two more double crochets in that same location. There we go. Now, of course, again, we do the middle double crochets. OK, so we're here. So again, I've got my stitch marker reminding me that this V is the one. It's lying a little bit sort of not into my straight viewpoint, but I know it's there and I know where to find it. So basically, this is what you're going to do um, until you have the longest row width that you need. OK, so I think I am nearly in the middle of my square that I'm going to fold over for my envelope. But I just wanted to show you that here my sides are really nice and straight and it is basically sort of, you know, a straight triangle here. But then sort of your last few rows tend to do this. And even though you might think, oh, my goodness, that's not going to end well. By the time I've done a few more rows, this is straight. So it's a really strange thing. But I know that I'm doing the right amount of stitches I'm not doing too many and I tried with less and that didn't work. So 
yes it looks for i can't put it in the hang on let me just put it like this it looks funny your last sort of four rows look funny but then once you get past those all these look fine so it's a strange thing but just persevere with it and i think it will just work out it i think it'll sort itself out once you know you sort of we've done the whole square so now of course it's working out how big to make this because of course we then have to reduce and it all has to fit in there because if we have to make it bigger we have to come back all the way from where we started reducing so i have my page here and i'm going to try and just you know give myself an idea what it would look like for it to fit in there and I'm not worried about this going over each other. I'm just going to put that over there and then that's fine. Or make it a little bit bigger so it's easy to put it in. There we go. I think that looks okay. And I think I'm nearly there to start reducing. So I'm going to um, do one more row, I think, and then I will be back to show you how to reduce. So what we are going to do, once again, we do the little chain for turning. You turn your work. And this time, instead of doing three double crochets in that first V here, we are going to do three double crochets together over the three next stitches. So I've done half a double crochet here. You know, we're just one pull through the two. I'm going to yarn over again, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop and yarn over, pull through two and stop into the next stitch for my next double crochet then you pull through two and now i'm going to yarn over and pull through all the loops the four loops on my hook and as you can see look this has given us some sort of corner here and we are leaning inwards then you do your double crochets of the middle of your square and this will sort of it's fine it, it'll curl in a bit but it's fine once uh, once again after you've done a couple of more rows it will be fine so then when you get to your other side you're going to have to work out where it was that that last stitch was. So this is the last stitch. Then we have one, so one, two, three. So I can do two more double crochets. OK, because, of course, here we are going to be doing the same thing. We're going to do three double crochets together. So yarn over, insert into the first one and do your first pull through yarn over into the next one pull through two and stop yarn over into that v on the side there we go because it's you know hiding a little bit by now you will know exactly where it is and then you yarn over and you pull through all the four loops on your hook and there we go then we do our chain our turning chain then we turn now here we have to make sure we remember once again which is our first V that we are going to be using in the next row. So we are going to do three double crochets together. So one, two and three. Okay, then we yarn over and we pull through the four loops on our hook. And can you see this is the V that we created? That's the one that we are going to be using next time for that last stitch. OK, so here it's it's really important again that you recognize what that V looks like so that you know which one to use when you come back. And I think my stitch mark is going to fall out because I'm not doing them up. <laughs> and then here. Once again, we are doing the double crochets. Here we have to find 
that double crochet that lies on top of those three double crochets that we did together, which I didn't mark earlier, of course. So it's this one here. So that's one, two, three. So I can do one more double crochet. There we go. And now I'm going to start doing my together ones. So one double crochet, the second one, and then here into that V that lies on top for the third one. Then you do your together, you chain and you turn. Whew. <laughs> and can you see? Yes, it looks a little bit funny, but if you pull it, look, perfect square. Okay, so once again, we do our three together. So we go into that first one and do your half finished double crochet. The next one and the next one. And then, of course, we do them all together. And then here, that's the one. Let me take this one off because we've used it. And there we go. There, that's the one that we are going to be using in a moment. Okay. Then the straight up double crochets and my other stitch marker has come undone of course look it's typical isn't it you you really need to do them up Anya <laughs> okay and then of course I can recognize it here then of course I've got that one one two three and this one is already where I am doing the together double crochets so in towards the end of course all your rows are going to get shorter and shorter because you only ever do that longest row once okay and let me just do that yeah and as you can see here we now only have right let me do it chain one and we only have one two three four five stitches left so we are going to do them all as a together because that's how we started as well. So I'm just going to do them all together up until the one that's green. Pull through and there we are. Okay. So this is our little square. Let me just take this one out. Now, obviously, when you make this bigger, it's going to look different because you'll be able to lay it flat much, much nicer. And, um, you know, it'll be much bigger for you to see. But there we go. So this is basically our little square that we are making, which I have made in a large version. Let me show you. Ta -da. So I have about 44 rows in here. And this is indeed, look at how straight my edges are. This is indeed a really lovely little square. There we go. Look. Yes, this, this corner is a little bit funny, but that's okay because I am using it for my envelope. So I have tried, of course, to get the page in and it works really well. So I am going to sew it up like this to make the envelope and I haven't finished my finish here properly because I want to do a loop and then put a button on so I can close it up. <laughs> I mean, isn't this just, I love this project. I know, <laughs> I know it's a little fancy of me and I'm indulging myself by making it, but I am teaching you techniques, you see, and that's the thing. When you're learning a new technique, like for instance here, I've made this in a really small square for you. You could do this square as well before you start on your bigger project. But also, if you were planning to do this for a really big project, for a blanket or a scarf or something else, it's nice to be able to make something that's in fact a useful thing, but you've practiced, okay? So I would suggest this, even this, as a even bigger and turn it into a proper cushion, that would be wonderful as well. So you'd have a cushion of an envelope and a cushion of a page. See, 
the ideas, right? And then I am just going to try and pick up here. I'm going to hold it together like this and I'm just going to try and pick up two stitches that are lying next to each other. And uh, maybe I need to <laughs> have the yarn coming from the other side. There we go. And I'm just going to do a single crochet. You could do slip stitches as well, just so that it, well, let's, let's do both. We're going to, see, this is what I'm like as well. When I'm doing something like this, I'm just picking up anywhere I can, okay? I just pick up this V and then something on the other side, just to try and do it neatly. But sometimes that doesn't work. Oh, I don't know whether that's going to look good. So let's just... Lay it down and see what it looks like. Hmm, I think that's okay, look. You'll have a little ridge there. I think that's fine. And then we pull that into the... It's quite pliable, so you can just make it do what you want it to do. I think that's okay. If we were to do slip stitches, would that look different? So let's have a look. So... In there, in there, and then pull through and straight through. In there, in there. I mean, it's hard to know where to go in. I'm just trying to do it sort of. See, this would be the same stitch. So I'm just going to the next stitch, picking up something there. I'm looking for two strands to pick up each time and just do a slip stitch because before we were doing single crochets, so mm, picked up one strand there, that's okay. Two, yeah. Once again, with the slip stitch, look, it tends to bunch up, see? So let's have a look. If we lay it flat, I think the slip stitch, although it tends to look neater, is more I don't know whether I like that. I like the ridge. I like the ridge here. So I think the slip stitch is looking a little bit, mm, not really anything here. I can't see. It's not neat, I don't think. The single crochet here is much neater because you've got the ridge. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the single crochet <laughs> for the rest of the assembly. So there we go. It's good to try. And it's good to see what you like as well. Um, doesn't matter if you have to undo a couple of stitches. Then at least you know that you like the look of what you are doing. And again, making sure that you don't bunch it together. Have free flowing yarn. Making sure you don't pull it together. Maybe my distance between my stitches is a bit too big here as well. Let's have a look. See, this is it. You always, when you're doing something like this, even though you have maybe the instructions or, well, I don't. <laughs> I'm making this up as I go along. Um, you're still having to make sure you're, yeah, that's okay. I am going to try and, and make the stitches a little bit smaller because this is this V is a little bit big here. But then again, it's finding the locations to go in. And once you have done this for a little while, you might just find the locations much easier. Let me just have a good look. Let's try and go into the same location on this side and that one there. Maybe that'll be nicer. Just trying it. I mean, for you, it, it might look a little bit different as well with all those stitches on the side picking them up and you know see what you can recognize basically now there let's do one another one in there just to make sure the v doesn't get too big on top mm -hmm. i'm just going for it now <laughs> okay now, I knew this wasn't going to tally up because that's how I laid it out. So just lay it down again. That's fine. See, yeah, it's better here. 
once I got into it, you see. So I knew this wasn't going to tally up because that's what I need for the space for the, for the page. So I'm just going to go around the edge and I'm going to try and go up to here and then pick up this one there. Okay, so maybe, maybe one more, maybe one more. Just to make sure it's all neat and tidy. Or another one, why not? <laughs> okay, and now I'm just going to go and do a single crochet around the edges here. That's fine. A couple in that starting circle that we did. And a couple around it there on the side here. See? That gives it a nice finish there. Look at that. <laughs> okay. And all we need to do now is do the same thing on the other side, of course. So make sure this is lying nice and flat against it. Try and tally up the line here, the here. Yeah, I think I am where, oh, this is the end. I think I am, yeah, that's it. Here and here. That's what I'm going to pick up and do. And then have another look. Always check, always, always check. Because that way you avoid making mistakes. Okay, so is this reasonably straight? Is this about, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to continue all the way down just as I did here. And then I'm going to put in some ends and then I'll be back to show you how to do that little loop. And I've got to find the button. So I found this little packet of buttons and look at that. Look. The exact colour. Unbelievable. Well, you know, the colour, I couldn't get any closer. So I am going to take my little corner here, do a little sort of chain to finish it off. Then I'm going to do five chains. One, two, three, four, five. Go back to the beginning and then sort of here, I think a good location to go in and to do a slip stitch to make a little circle okay now before you do anything else take your button and see if it goes through the little loop yeah that should be fine so i have folded my page into three and then into two so that it's about the same size as the envelope and let's see if i can fit it in Oh, this is exciting. I mean, you could make an envelope for a blanket. I mean, you know. Right, so that's that. That's in. Push it in a little bit further. And then bring the flap up. Look at that. Look how cute. Oh, my goodness. And you can, of course, slip stitch an address or a name. Make a little, um, you know, post stamp there. Look at how cute this is. Oh my goodness, I am so happy with this little project. Right, okay. I'm going to try and establish where to put the button because it's probably lower there. It's about lower than you think. Okay, let's put a stitch marker there for now just so that we know because, of course, I've got to take the page out. There we go. I've got some sherbet. So put your thread onto your needle. I'm going to suggest... You fold this out inside out and you start by weaving it in as if you were weaving in an end. Okay, so do a little bit of this. My yarn is too long, but never mind. There we go. Come back and do a bit more. So you have already secured this piece of yarn before you actually start attaching your button. Okay, there we go. Right, so this already is not going to go anywhere. So we could already, in theory, cut this off. 
make our work a little bit easier. Then you are going to go through the fabric where the stitch marker is. So again, a little bit of weaving in because I'm not in the right location. There we go, coming through. So already we know that this is well attached. You go through your button and then come out again on the other side through the other hole and then go around a stitch here. Why is this back? There we go. See, and then gently, where am I here? Just pull it. And so that's attached. Now is the time also to make sure that you are in the middle here. And I think it's looking good. So you could just pull it slightly to the direction that you want it. Again, come out, but make sure you're in a different stitch. Pull it a little bit, go through the fabric, going to the other side. Look how cute. And then once again, you can do this again. I normally go twice, but I think this looks neat. I'm just going to leave it. And now you can go, of course, and do some more weaving in as we did with the beginning yarn. And that way, you know, you know that you've secured the button and you have at the same time secured the ends. There we go. See? Done. Cut off. And then we have finished doing that. And then once again, bring over your loop here. Fingers crossed it still goes around it. Yes, of course it does. There we go. And now sew in this end and we are done. I hope you have enjoyed making this little project. Do show me what you have made with it. I am suggesting, you know, just as a page and an envelope, but like I said, a cushion, a big blanket as a page and then a big Thing around it as a as an envelope an envelope cushion an envelope page I want to see your creations that you can make with my ideas you know so do go to the Facebook group and post it there I would love to see what you come up with and thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye mm -hmm.